Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to start working with fractions. So for this part of your notes, we're going to title it an introduction. To fractions and mixed numbers. And again, don't forget to put your date in or which week that you're working on just to help you stay organized. Okay. And I think probably a lot of this video will be review or just a refresher if you haven't seen it in a while. So we're going to go through some common definitions um, and then also talk about how to go between the improper form and a mixed number form. Um, and you'll, you'll learn about those definitions in just a second. Okay, so for example, first of all, a fraction... is just a part of a whole. Um, so it's just a way for us to represent a piece of a whole or a part of a whole, um, or if we have more than a whole, like an extra part, right? So an extra piece of it. So in our fraction, I'm gonna give you an example here, something like three fourths. So this top part here is called your numerator. And this bottom part here is called your denominator. Okay. This part here is your whole, and the top part really represents the part. Uh, so something like three fourths. So for instance, let's say I have a circle and I have four parts all together. So the whole thing is cut into four parts. Uh, and then maybe this is a pizza. And so I'm eating three of those four parts. So I have three fourths of the circle shaded in, okay? Now also as a little side note, this little line in the middle is just called your fraction bar. Okay, so if you just hear someone refer to a fraction bar, they just mean that little line that separates that numerator and denominator. And of course, we've seen that before because fractions are also another way that we can write division too. Okay, so. So let's say I have one sixth. So I'm gonna use a rectangle this time just to kind of do something a little bit different. And I'm going to break it into six pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I have one of those pieces, then I'm just going to shade in one. So this is one sixth of the rectangle. Okay, so that denominator there gives you the whole, so how many parts all together. And then the top part represents whatever part you're focusing on. So here I'm focusing on the shaded part of the rectangle. So I have one sixth of the rectangle. Um, I could say is shaded. So if I have one sixth of the rectangle that's shaded, then I have one, two, three, four, five pieces that are not. So I have five sixths. of the rectangle is not shaded, right? So we can write things based on parts that are shaded in, based on parts that are unshaded. It's really based on the context of the problem. So that numerator is gonna be whatever you're focusing on for the part of that problem. A lot of times it tends to be the shaded part of an object, um, but it doesn't have to be. So we could also talk about the unshaded part, or we could even bring in a, a you know a real world example here, for instance. Uh, one thing I do want to note here is that when we're dealing with fractions, you should have all equal sized um, parts. So sometimes that gets forgotten. So I'm I know I'm doing this by hand, so it's not going to be perfect but I'm trying to make my parts equal. So here I have four equal size pieces. Here I have six equal size pieces. So that's important too, that these are equal parts of a whole um, as we draw the image. Okay. 
And I'm just going to do one more example here. So let's say I want to do something like three fifths of the figure. Now, maybe my figure isn't a circle or a rectangle. Maybe it's some sort of group of objects. So maybe I have something like five triangles. And then here I'm going to shade in three of them. So again, it doesn't have to be one specific shape. It could be an application, it could be a rectangle, a circle, some sort of diagram, and so on as we're doing these different parts here. Or maybe I can say one third of the cup is filled with water. So if I want to draw a visual, so this is my cup here. And I'm going to draw about one third of it. So let's see if I break this into equal parts. And like that. Then one third of it is filled with water. Okay. So that three tells me how many equal parts that I'm going to break this cup into. So you can see that I have one, two, three equal parts, and I'm gonna fill one third with water. Okay, so I wanna talk about a few more definitions and things too. So we have proper fractions, And these have a value less than one. And what you're going to notice is that the numerator, so the top, oops, is smaller than the denominator. So some examples here. Actually, all the ones we've just seen are examples. So five, six, one third, two fifths, et cetera. So each of these has a numerator that's smaller than the denominator. Um, and because of that, they have a value that is smaller than one or less than one whole. Now we also have improper fractions, and these have a value of one or greater. And what happens is the numerator is the same or bigger than the denominator. So examples here, something like four thirds. Okay, so our numerator is bigger than de the denominator or something like nine sevenths or even something like six six. Okay, so if your numerator is the same or bigger, it's considered improper. And what happens is it has a value of one or bigger. So here six divided by six is just one. So hopefully that's one that you recognize. Um, and then here, if your numerator is bigger than the denominator, then the values will be over one. Now, improper fractions can also be written in a different way um, as mixed numbers. So a mixed number um, has a value of one or greater. And then what you see is a whole number with a proper fraction. So for example, one and one third, one and two sevenths, 
the number one. So I'm just using our examples above and actually changing them into the mixed number form. Uh, it doesn't have to be one though for your first number. So you could do something like five and one half. So that would actually be the same as 11 halves. Now I'm sticking with positives here, but you could do negative numbers as well. So these same definitions do hold with negative values. And the thing that's interesting is that we can actually switch back and forth between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Um, so that's what I wanna focus on next is, well, how do you go back and forth? So I'm telling you that these values are the same as these values right here. Uh, so they do match up perfectly right down the line. Um, so how do you go back and forth between the two? And actually, before we go on, they're both good. So I know a lot of times you'll see, you're probably used to people saying like, oh, we don't like improper fractions. Um, but improper fractions tend to be really easy to work with when we do computations. So we are going to use them, particularly when we multiply and divide, but also when we add or subtract fractions. Um, mixed numbers, I think, are more understandable for most people, right? It makes sense if you see something like one and one third, then you know that value is a little bit over one. Whereas if you see four thirds, that's a little harder to understand what that means. Um, so both of these are good. The positive of mixed numbers is that I think they're a little bit easier to understand what they actually represent, but improper fractions tend to be easier to work with computationally. So when we actually do calculations, um, so they both have their pros and their cons. So how do we go from a mixed number to an improper fraction? So for example, let's say I have the number two and one fourth. Okay, how do I make it an improper fraction? So what you do is your first step is you're going to multiply the whole number and the denominator. So in this case, my whole number is two and my denominator is four. So you're gonna, oh, sorry, multiply those together. So two times four is equal to eight. And then you're going to add in the numerator which is the top. So I'm gonna take that eight that I already have here and I'm gonna add in that numerator of one. So the value from step two is your new numerator. And the denominator, do not, nator, will stay the same. So in our example here, our original denominator was four, so it's gonna stay four. So my answer is gonna be nine over four. So we're multiplying the two and the four, to get eight, we're adding in the numerator. That becomes my new top. And then the four will stay the same. Let's do another example. Let's do five and six sevenths. All right, so I'm gonna do the shorthand this time. So we're gonna multiply the whole number in the denominator. So we multiply these together. So three times five, uh, sorry, five times seven. I don't know why I'm saying three. Five times seven is 35. And then you're gonna add in the six from up top. So we're gonna add that six in to get 41. So 41 is our new numerator and our denominator stays the same at seven. So easy for us to go from a mixed number 
to an improper fraction. And again, why would you want to do that? Well, improper fractions tend to be easier to do the calculations with. So sometimes it is helpful to go back and forth. All right, let's go the other way now. So let's do one of the examples we've already seen, 11 halves. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead and divide the numerator by the denominator. So I'm going to set this up as 11 divided by 2. And we're going to do our long division there. So two goes into 11, that's gonna be five times, which is 10. 11 minus 10 is one, so I have a remainder of one. Now, if you need to do your multiples list here for more complicated problems, you would still do that. All right, so the whole number part of your answer, so in this case, the five, is also the whole number in the mixed number. The remainder is the numerator and the denominator stays the same. So this five here stays as my whole number. The remainder is gonna be your numerator. So it's gonna be one, and then your denominator stays the same. And there's our answer, five and one half. All right, let's try one more example here. How about 55 fourths? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my division. So I have four going into 55. And again, if I wanna do my multiples list, I can go ahead and do that. Um, four goes into five one time, which is four. Five minus four is one. I bring down the five. Four goes into 15 now, that's gonna be three times, which is 12. So I have a remainder of three. So that 13 is gonna stay as my whole number. That remainder is gonna be my numerator. And then my denominator stays the same. So 13 and three fourths. Now, just as a little side note here, you can also draw pictures of improper fractions and mixed numbers. So I'm just gonna do one kind of quick example there. All right, so let's do an example of nine fourths, which is an improper fraction. And there's different ways that you can draw this. So notice that my whole has groups of four. So I'm gonna use circles here. So I have four there. Now I have nine shaded in all together, so I need another group. So I have four plus four is eight, that's still not enough. 
and then now I have 12. So now I have more than enough. So what we do if we're drawing a picture of an improper fraction is you're going to use your denominator there to figure out how many pieces should be in each hole. And I'm just using circles. So I know each hole has to have four parts. But I want nine pieces shaded in. So I need to have, in this case, three groups to have enough pieces. So now I shade in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then there's nine. If we go ahead and change this over to a mixed number and do my division, I see that uh, four goes into nine two times, which is eight. And I have a remainder of one. So this becomes two and one fourth. And notice that if you look at your picture here, it matches, right? I have two holes shaded. and one fourth shaded. Okay. So we can draw the pictures as well. I think most people find drawing the picture of the mixed number easier because you can clearly see two holes and then just draw that one fourth extra piece shaded in. Um, but you can also do it with the improper fractions. Now just remember your denominator is always telling you how many parts are in the hole. So our denominator tells us how uh, many parts are in the whole. So that's really important when you're drawing a picture or when you're trying to set up a fraction with an applied problem. Um, and then that numerator is really like how many pieces do you have or how many parts are shaded in. Okay, so just a couple little tips um, along the way here. Okay, so another thing I wanna talk about here is kind of part of our introduction is how do we graph fractions on a number line? So let's say I want to graph three fourths on a number line. Um, the first thing I do want to note here is that this is a proper fraction. Right, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So when it's a proper fraction, its value is less than one. And again, I'm talking about positive numbers here, so the value is less than one. If I had a negative in front, it would be between zero and negative one instead. So to graph this, I know I'm going somewhere between zero and one. And remember the denominator tells you the number of parts in the whole. So what I'm saying is that each hole has to be broken up into four pieces. So my hole here is from zero to one. So if I break this up into four parts, so one, two, three, four, then I'll be able to much easier see where I should graph three fourths. So I have my parts of four here and I want to be three units in. So one, two, three. Let's say I had instead one and three fourths. So now I have a mixed number and notice that I have one and three fourths. So this value is between one and two, right? So it's bigger than one, but I don't have another hole yet. So it's less than two. And again, my denominator is in fours. So I'm going between one and two. And I'm breaking that into one, two, three, four pieces. 
So I'm going bigger than one, but less than two, and I'm three fourths in. So this is this value right here. All right, let's try another example. How about we do two thirds? So again, this is a proper fraction. So its value is less than one. So its value is, in this case, because it's positive, between zero and one. So on my number line here, going between zero and one. The bottom tells me that I have three parts in my whole. So I'm breaking this into three parts. So one, two, three. And my value is a two here, so I'm going two parts in. So one, two. So there is two thirds. Right, let's try one more example here. So I have 11 six. Now this time I have an improper fraction. So for improper fractions, you can graph in the improper form or if you prefer to change to a mixed number, that's fine too. So I'll kind of show you both ways here and we'll start with the improper form. And again, don't forget that the denominator tells you that number of parts for our whole. Now, I do see that I have a improper fraction here, right? So the value is greater than or equal to one. So it's going to be at least one, if not bigger. Um, so I'm going to start here. It's zero, one, two, three, and four. So I know I'm going bigger than one here. And it tells me that I have to break it into six pieces for each whole. So I'm going to try to squeeze that in on my example here. Let's see how we do. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, four, five, six. Okay, so I have all my parts broken up. And again, remember fractions are equal pieces. So I'm doing my best to make all my parts equal size here as well. And this time we're going in 11. So I'm gonna start at zero, I'm gonna count in 11 units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So right here. Now, when you're graphing, make sure you also count the whole. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, as we go in. So that's where 11 sixths is. Now, I think it's a little bit easier to see as a mixed number. So you may want to go ahead and just change this over. So six goes into 11 only one time. And you can see that you have a remainder of five. So this is one and five, six. So now I can see the value is between one and two, right? So now it's a little bit easier to see like where I'm actually looking. Whereas before I was just kind of drawing numbers, not really sure how many I had to go by for my holds. But here I can see it's between one and two. So my one and five, six is a little bit over one. It's actually almost to the two mark, right? Because five, six is almost a whole thing shaded in. And you can see that on the number line here, it works. So we're between the one and the two and I'm going five, six in. So I'm going five in, one, two, three, four, five. So I get that same exact mark whether I'm graphing as an improper fraction or whether I'm graphing as a mixed number, they're both fine. All right. One last thing I just wanna remind you of, and it's nothing new, it's just kind of a reminder. Okay, so don't forget we cannot divide by zero. So just a couple examples here. So if I have something like five over zero, this is undefined. Okay, so we cannot divide by zero. That still goes for fractions. You cannot have a zero in that denominator. 
uh, but a zero in the numerator would be fine. Okay, so if a zero over seven, that means it's just zero. So you have no parts shaded in. If you're dividing by one, so let's say I had six divided by one, you get the value of six. So remember that one in the denominator is still division by one. It's not going to change that value. We do use ones in the denominator quite a bit. Um, so you do want to notice here that dividing by one doesn't change the value. And that's a really important idea that we're going to use later on. Um, but something like one over fourth stays one over four. Okay, so that does not just become four. You can only kind of cancel out that one if it's in the denominator. If it's in the numerator, that's totally different. These are very different things. So you just want to be careful with your zeros and your ones. So a zero in the denominator is bad. It's undefined. But a zero in the numerator is fine. Here, a one in the denominator will not change your answer, but a one in the numerator does. And this is a common mistake. A lot of students will take one fourth and write the final answer as four instead, but that's incorrect. So if you have a one in the numerator, don't cancel it out. 